Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. Deep in the Chilean jungle, Captain Friday has escaped from the Chicota sacrificial chamber with Skip Turner and Dr. English, only to be led into a second trap in the passage under the river by the voice of Mrs. Santos. Hardly had they entered the underground passageway, which was lighted by weird flickering torches, when they came face to face with members of the living dead priesthood headed by the werewolf, face to face with a half-man, half-animal, whose eyes glittered and whose ears lay flat against his head like a mad dog. And by his side, but this is your story, Captain Friday. Yes, by his side stood the beautiful green-eyed Tula, Chakota Priestess, with her lovely lips curled in a snarl as vicious as the werewolf's. Then suddenly from some side passage stepped Mrs. Santos. She stepped between the werewolf's back and skipped Dr. English and me. To our surprise, the werewolf fell to the ground, groveling, and his pack dissolved into the darkness with yelps of terror, Tula escaping with them. And now we're in the ancient La Jolla Monastery, the refuge of all persons like ourselves who are fighting the priesthood of the living dead and who seek the downfall of their sinister Maya Nahi. Maya Nahi, dissolute high priest of the sacred city of Chicota, who in his jungle sanctuary plans the downfall of all nations and the end of all civilization. The monastery of La Jolla raises its gaunt walls on one side of the Zambala Mountains. On the other side of the mountains lies Maya Nahib's lair, also known as the Land of the Living Dead. And now, senores, that the monks have received you and have appointed you each a cell, I want you to come with me. Yes, some place, any place where we can talk. I've got to know what's become of Judith. You put me off and put me off. Mrs. Santos... If my daughter's fallen into the hands of the Maya Naib... Patience, Dr. English. The walls are listening. The whole world will know it if you... Senores, come into this chamber. The monks gave you candles, Capitan Friday. Light them. Hey, did we just get ourselves locked in? Light your candle, Skip. Where? Father... Captain Friday. Oh, Father, you're safe. Judith's my daughter. Oh, Father. Oh, go on, Judith. I've yes. never been so glad to see oh, anybody. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hold it, everybody. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. We're not getting anywhere this way. Oh. One at a time, please. Now, let's hear what Judith and Mrs. Santos have to say first. Yes, yeah, Judith. How'd you get here? And what was Mrs. Santos doing in the Chakota Sacrificial Temple? Man, how she scared the pants off that werewolf fellow and that green-eyed babe, too. Look. Hold it, Skip. Huh? Let Judith talk. Well, I, I came by way of a secret passage between La Jolla and the monastery here. But, Mrs. Santos, you tell me. The secret passage? But how did Dr. you... Dr. English, did you not get my message? What message? A verbal message from an old Indian. We didn't get any message. The moment we discovered you and Judith gone from the hotel, we fled into the jungle. That explains it. The message I left said, wait at the hotel until tomorrow. Then you will follow Judith and me through the secret passage. You'd better explain that, Mrs. Santos. There were friends from the monastery who knew the secret passage waiting in La Jolla. When Juan, our guide, was slain, they came to our aid. Because of the danger from the agents of the living dead, they could not take us all at once. So they slipped Judith and me away and were to have come for you to make a second caravan on the following day. Your sudden dash into the jungle upset everything. Then we are to trust you after all, Mrs. Santos. I hope so, Dr. English. Then what did that dying Indian mean when he said, if you would save Tula, you must strike at once? <gasps> you heard? And what were you doing with the priestess Tula in the chamber when they were about to sacrifice Dr. English? You saw me there? Yes. I was not with Tula, Captain Friday. But you stood there watching them put the doctor through the agony of the sacrifice. Why were you allowed the run of the temple if you're not a friend of the living dead? Did you know, Captain Friday, that it was I who saved Dr. English? That it was I who called attention to the shadow of the Gila monster on the face of the sun? That was coincidence, Mrs. Santos. 
You were as much appalled by it as the werewolf and Tula were. Coincidence, you think? I wonder. You have answered none of Captain Friday's questions, Mrs. Sanders. None of them. And they all implicate you, connect you with mankind's deadliest enemies, the brothers of the living dead. You refuse to trust me, Dr. English? Trust you? How can I trust a woman who can turn back a mob of half-mad savages led by a creature as vicious as the werewolf merely by the simple signal of a hand? Signal? Signal? Yes, you signaled the werewolf. Mrs. Santos, what is your relationship with Maya Nayib and his living dead? My... my relationship? Yes. In what capacity do you serve them? Dr. English, you do not know what you are saying. But I saw you signal. You saw? You saw my hand? What movement did you see it make? Tell me, what movement did you see me make? I... I, to be frank with you, I couldn't see your hand. It was your general attitude, the gesture of your arm. Your back was to me, Then you did not see. You did not see the signal. Then you admit you did signal. But that does not matter as long as you did not see the signal. But what the heck's so important about that? I will tell you. You must believe me. Yes? For the first time in my life, I found it necessary to have recourse to certain discoveries which my husband made in his investigations of the ancient priesthood. You mean some form of mysticism? See, the gesture of my hand represented a single word, the most powerful, most potent word that the mind of man has ever conceived. Its origin dates back to the dawn of life, and in all these hundreds of thousands of years, not once, has it ever been spoken by the lips of man? For it is a word which cannot be spoken. You expect us to believe that? I have told you, Captain Friday, that in the La Jolla Monastery we battle mysticism with mysticism. That gesture of my hand saved our lives and brought us safely to the monastery. But how did you know that the werewolf would understand and obey? I did not know. For he is a power in Maya Nahib's sacred city. In the temple of the living dead, the sign is known. And it seemed only right that he would know it. For his own protection. Well, I don't get it. What for the love of Mike does this sign mean? That I cannot reveal, Senor Skip. Oh, it sounds like a lot of cheap oakum to me. Oh, no, Skip. What do you say, Doctor? It's quite possible that Mrs. Santos is telling the truth, Captain. Quite possible? Quite possible? You suppose the monks of these monastery would allow me to... It would be well for the Brotherhood of the Living Dead to have a spy in the enemy's stronghold, Mrs. Santos, especially an agent with your credentials. And is this the thanks I get, Captain Friday, for rescuing you and your friends? You insisted on us coming down here. You exposed us to danger. You remember that, don't you, Mrs. Santos? Captain Friday, not too harsh. And another thing. Dr. English, doesn't it seem strange that your son Robert didn't once mention either yourself or Judith the name of Mrs. Roberto Santos after his return and before he was murdered? Yes, I've thought of that. In fact, doesn't it seem strange that if they were such intimate friends as Mrs. Santos declares, that he didn't bring her directly home with him? Yes, Captain, it does. Such a friend would have been more than welcome in our home. You senores are worn out with fatigue and excitement. You are overly suspicious at the moment. Your minds are not fit to judge any situation clearly tonight. I will leave you now. I would advise you to go to the cells the monks have provided and sleep. Perhaps understanding will come to you in your dreams. Well, here we've spent two weeks in this blooming monastery, and what have we accomplished? Answer? Nothing. With a capital M. Ah, but how wonderfully peaceful and quiet it is now. Yeah, it's been tough sledding for you, Judy. For all of us, Skip. Where's Dr. English? With Mrs. Santos. That was a horrible fall she had down those rough stone steps yesterday. Captain Friday, she would have been killed if you hadn't saved her. She'll be in bed a week with those bruises. Those monks are wizards when it comes to human ills. They're so quiet and efficient and sure of themselves. I had a headache... And one of them simply passed his hand over my forehead and down the back of my neck. And the pain was gone instantly. Hmm. Funny ducks, ain't they? With their prayer wheels and their rough sackcloth robes down to their feet. Their leader reminds me of the Dalai Lama of Tibet. There is a close connection, I suspect. Father thinks so, too. Well, what I wish is that Dr. English should bring out that secret map of his, the one drawn on human skin. Why don't he? 
Don't mention that map again. Hmm? Not here, nor any place else. You'll never see that map here. Well, then how the heck are we going to find the... Father and I know every line of that map by heart. Yeah, but how the heck are me and the captain going to help hunt out the key that'll lead to the secret passage? The one between the monastery and the sacred city, if we don't know what was on the map. Skip, keep your voice down. One of us will have to tell you. Well, don't you think it's about time you did it, then? As I understand it, the passage begins somewhere right here in this monastery. Skip and I have searched the place as thoroughly as possible, but not a clue. Well, that's not surprising. The monks here have been hunting for years. Then they've known all along there's an entrance into the sacred city. Yes. That's why we're so welcome here, given the run of the monastery. They are as anxious as we to solve the riddle of the secret passage. Well, listen, Captain and I are going down into the underground part of the monastery again this afternoon. Now, uh, how about giving us a lead, huh? Well, but I want to go along, Skip. Why, sure. Of course you can come along, honey. Uh, Judith? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hmm? Look here, Skip. Are you calling Judith honey in private? That's the second slip for you today. Why, uh... Do you mind, Captain Friday, if I don't? Oh, haven't any objection in the world. But I'm warning you. Watch out for him. <laughs> you go to blazes. But, uh, as you were saying about the map, darling, um... Hey, hey. Judith. Hey. <laughs> oh, aren't you ashamed to needle Skip like that? Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I'll fix him. No, but seriously, about that now. At the beginning of the secret passage, it shows a building representing this monastery, standing on the edge of a mountain in a terrible storm. Storm, huh? Has that some significance? Yes. The rain is falling in great torrents, and there is a long, jagged streak of lightning just over the building. I see. That's all. It, that's all? Well, it, it isn't very much, but... Well, somewhere in this monastery is a door. And what I have just told you is the key to it. Well, then we'll find it. Hmm. And the monks have been hunting years. And you the optimistic lad. And we've got to work fast. Remember, two weeks have passed since the Gila monster rode with the sun. The catastrophe which it predicts may crash down on the world at any moment. Yeah, but how will our enter in the secret city prevent this world tragedy? Saying it's true. It's feared by those who know that Maya Nahid and his living dead will be at the bottom of the catastrophe. But the monster has already ridden with the sun. Doesn't that mean we're too late? You mustn't say that, Captain. You mustn't even think it. The Black Death is too terrible. Captain Friday, Skip Turner, and their companions, Dr. English and his daughter, Judith, are in the dank slime of the underground room in the La Jolla Monastery, searching... Down here in the darkness, with only reed torches and flashlights, they are looking for the entrance to the secret passage. The passage which will lead them into the very heart of the enemy. The stronghold of the Brotherhood of the Living Dead. Careful, Judith. It's a slimy, dark, wet place down here. Yes. Dank as a rain barrel. And we'd sure be in a fix without these torches the monks have stuck up all around. Hey, what do you suppose these big bare chambers are used for, Dr. English? This looks very much like a chapel of some kind. Notice the paintings on the walls and the altar. The altar down at the lower end of the room. Who do you suppose did them, Doctor? Spanish? Oh, no, no. These are the work of the Indians. Some truly marvelous pieces of work. Now, look at this one. I... By Joe! Judith! Father, what is this? Look, Judith! This picture here. <gasps> oh. Holy mackerel! Look, a picture of a storm. The map. Our precious map. Exactly. You think this is the key to the secret passage? Symbolical, see? At the top of the room, it's rain. By the time it's reached the center of the wall, it's a veritable waterfall. Yes, yes. Look how the big rock divides the waterfall. On the one side, the water runs in a boiling, frothy disorder. And on the other side of the rock, the water falls smoothly, gently, almost placidly. Oh, never mind that, Dr. English. But the symbolism, man, the symbolism, don't you see? The rock painted on the wall represents the dividing line between turmoil and dissension on the one side and order and harmony on the other. Yeah, sure, I suppose so. You mean we're to look for a rock and that's the key to the secret passage? But where are we supposed to look? Why look any farther? Rain and lightning was the clue given on the map. There's your rain and lightning. Hold your flash directly on that painting of the rock, Captain. Hey, wait a minute. I've got it. Look here. The painting of the rock exactly outlines the actual stone on the wall. Do you suppose we're actually looking at the rock 
that hides the opening to the secret passage. I'd swear it. Well, what do you know? Here, Doctor, we can move this altar up against the wall. By standing on it, we'll have easy access to the rock. Good. Give us a hand with it. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Uh, <clears throat> solid stone, but we can do it. All right, come, come on. on. Everybody now. Yeah. All right. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Uh, there you are. Hey, it's strange the monks haven't run onto this. Would you? Remember, we had the original clue, the storm scene. Well, not in a million years. <laughs> Clever, these Indians. Better let me climb up and try the stone first, Doctor. Go ahead, Captain. Judith, you and Skip hold your flashes on the picture. Yes. Even if it is the gateway to the secret passage, these past 300 years will have sealed it pretty tight. Yeah, sure. Hey, you up, Captain? Yeah. Hey, here, here. Take this chisel. It'll help you to loosen the dirt and mortar around the edges. And here's a wooden mallet to pound with. Thought of everything, huh? Yeah, I've got him. Now we try it. How does she look? Hello. There isn't any mortar in the cracks. Huh? Look out. Huh? Look. Look, it's swinging open. The rock swung open. It's on a pivot. That's strange. That opened entirely too easily. Been used lately, all right. Swung open the moment I touched it. Uh, are we going in? Well, anyway, there's your passageway, Doctor. It couldn't be anything but the secret passageway, could it? No, no, it's got to be. Of course we're going in. Okay. Skip, help Judith up on the altar. Yeah. Give me your hand. Up, you come in the oh. passageway. Oh, there. Oh, it's, it's dark in here. No noise, please. You're next, Doctor. I'm coming. Here, give me your hand. Uh, there. there, thanks. Okay, come on, Skip. You bet. Uh, and here we are. Yeah. Now, Doctor, you and I lead. Judith, follow us. And Skip, you bring up the rear. Yeah. Everyone keep his flash in one hand and his gun in the other. Come on. There's a fine sand on the floor. Our feet don't make a sound. Hey, Doctor, look at these walls. All these carvings. Ancient Chakota work, Skip. A magnificent fine for us. I don't doubt but much of the unknown history of the world is told in these pictures. Look. Clear to the ceiling. At least 15 feet high. And as far down the passage as our light carries. Beautiful. Stupendous. Look, the stairway ahead. We're going down into another room. Hey, we should have closed that entrance. I tended to it, Captain. Oh, good. All right, down the steps now. Careful. Amazing. Look, Captain. The room we're descending into is hewn from solid rock. <laughs> A man. A man screamed. Hey, I thought we had this place to ourselves. Hold it. Listen. Well, are we going on? What do you say, Doctor? We're going on. Judith, if you want to go back, there's still time. I, I, I'm still going with you. Any idea what that was, Doctor? Sounded like a man in mortal agony. Diabolical. <laughs> hey, there it is again. Listen. English. Dr. Julian English. Someone's calling your name, Doctor. Come on, come on. Keep your gun handy, Skip. You bet you. Listen. Hey, there he is. There on the floor. Oh, oh no. Horrible. Judith, get hold of yourself. Yes. Stand up on your feet or I'll shake you. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll be all right. Here, give me a hand, Skip. Dr. English, this man's chained to the wall. Too, too late, Dr. English. I, I, I'm finished. <laughs> the end of the passage. The stairway to, to the sun. Chained to the wall. Poor, emaciated body. We came too late. Hey, look, he's white. American. You know him, Doctor? He called your name. Hold the light on his face. Judith, look. It's Arthur Henderson. It's Henderson. Of course I know him. Henderson? But, but his hair is white. Henderson was a big man. There's, there's nothing but skin and bones. Agony can do that to a man. Agony and terror. But who is he? Fellow archaeologist. Saw him less than two years ago at the International Convention in Bogota. Only two years ago. But how did he get here? The brothers to the living dead have taken another pawn from our side of the board, Captain. Robert. Henderson. Who's to be next? Looks like we are. I'm for getting out of here. Quiet. Put out those lights. The werewolf. Talk about your black magic. That thing's everywhere. Looks as though we've tracked him to his lair this time. Listen. Gone. Just a wolf cry fading out into thin air. Look, Doctor. 
Why not get the monks back at the monastery to help us? We can come back with a crew of those monks. Turn back now after what Henderson said? You don't know what you're saying. What Henderson said? Yes, at the end of the passage, the stairway to the sun. Well, what about it? I think now I know what that zigzag streak of lightning in the storm symbolizes. Come, we've got to go ahead. Yeah, you're the scientist. If you say so. You can stand there and see the way this is affecting Judith and still say go no, on? No, 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 Skip. Of course we're going on. Remember, Judith, if you keep your head, use it. I'm all right, Father. Look, there must be hundreds of rooms down here. Little passageways leading off in every direction. Hello, something ahead. Steady with your light, Doctor. Stairway. Henderson's stairway to the sun. Well, what do you know? Broad as a road and leading up and up and up. It doesn't seem to be any end. Hewn uh, out of solid rock. And look, there on the first step, a great yellow disc planted in the rock. And golden rays shooting out in all directions. See, there's one on every step. Looks like gold. Why, it is gold. The stairway to the sun. Stairway is a series of terraces. Seven steps, and then a terrace. Then seven more steps. It's the same all the way up. Wonderful. Wonderful. <gasps> Father, look. Look there on the first terrace. Hello, a skeleton. Skeleton. Chained to the wall. Yeah, and there's another on the next terrace. And on the next. And the next. And the next. Stairway to the sun, my eye. More like we was coming up out of the pit of Hades. Oh, it's hideous. It's... Catch uh, your uh, Yeah. I've got her. Oh, poor little kid. She couldn't take it. Here, let me see her. Hmm. Heart's all right. She'll be all right in a moment. We'll have to carry her. We can't stop now. Yeah, she's light as a pigeon. I'll take her when you give out. <laughs> Are you kidding? Okay, Doctor, you and I lead off. Skip, sing out if we go too fast for you. Poor luckless chaps. There must be thousands of those skeletons on this stairway. Up and up we go right into the heart of some vast mountain. And on every seventh step is a grinning skull and a heap of bones chained to the wall. Wait. There's a light. It's coming from a doorway leading off the terrace just above us. It's coming through a drape over the doorway. Now, you folks wait here. I'll go ahead and investigate. If I flash my light once, that means for Dr. English to come on alone. If twice, it's all right for all of you to come. Watch yourself, boss. There's one flash. Time to go. You wait here, Skip. Okay, but I don't like it. What is it, Captain? Keep your voice down. Great stone chamber with torches stuck in the wall. Four persons seated at a table. No any of them? No, uh, three in long cloaks and their hoods over their faces. The fourth is a werewolf monster. A werewolf, eh? Listen, the werewolf's talking. Pull the curtain back just a bit. Maybe we can hear. Easy now. And as I have said, I have just come from the great massacre. For three days now, the people have seen the shadow of the monster upon the face of the sun. Yes. The hour is at hand. Centuries of waiting are at hand. <laughs> the world is ours. The world and all its millions and millions of helpless people to crush. To crush. These are the words of Maya Nagy, the Almighty One. The agents are awaiting the command to strike. This present civilization, ah, we will wipe it from the face of the earth. We will breed a greater civilization. The brothers of the living dead will rule the earth. Maya Nahib has spoken. Five days hence, you will have word from the master. Then strike. New York, San Francisco, Paris, Berlin, London. Around the world, the black death shall raise. But strike London first. Crush London first. Wipe them from the earth. Crush London. Remember, five days. Then the dance of death begins. But come. I must return to the city of our fathers. Maya Naive, the great high priest, awaits. Return to your post. Quick, Doctor. They're coming out. Get back into the recess. All right. 
back in the shadow. <laughs> Return to your post. But in five days, world will come. Yes. And then the dance of death will be here. Did you hear that, Captain? Only five days. Hold it. Only three people passed us. There's still one in the room. Be quiet. Here he comes. Let's get him. I've got him, Doctor. I've got him. They're not much of a fighter. I've got my hand over his mouth. Oh, blast this, Doc. Give me a handkerchief. Yeah. Get a gag in his mouth. Captain, why do you crazy? You'll have the whole crew down on us with your noise. Oh, I'm sitting on him. He can't hold. I haven't made much noise. Now, listen. Yeah, not a sound. We're safe enough for the moment. Here, turn on your flash. Let's see what we've got. You fool. There, turn it on his face. In heaven's name. Mrs. Santos. You. It's Mrs. Santos again. Mrs. Santos, who is in the confidence of the monks of the monastery. Mrs. Santos, who says she is fighting the living dead with body and soul. And here Captain Friday and Dr. English have caught her conniving with the highest agents of Maya Nahib the evil. Next week, you will hear the sixth episode of The Land of the Living Dead. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.